Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a new piece of paper. I'm actually going to lay it on top of this. This is actually animation paper, which we used at Disney. It all has these pegs here. So I could kind of explain to you just a little bit that these are actually old uh, animation peg bars that I've had for probably 20 plus years. And they are, they were designed to basically register, keep the registration of animation paper from drawing to drawing as you did your animation. And they also have a certain translucency that you might be able to see a little bit through it or the animator or the artist could see through it. But at the same time, it has a really nice, nice tooth. We call that a tooth because it's not like tissue paper. It's not going to fall apart. So that when you draw on it, you actually still get a really nice line on the thing. And so the idea of this was is that you would take a, a rough drawing like this and you could lay it down and you could start to kind of rework your character. You could start to use that as the rough basis because I can draw something like this or you can draw something like this very roughly. You don't have to worry about people that, oh, it doesn't look like a fine drawing. It doesn't look like this. That's not the point. The point is to get the rough idea down there. If you go to the Louvre in Paris or any great study, any great uh, pencil sketches from Degas or any, you'll see that the early sketches of the greatest paintings you've ever seen were very rough, scribbly things, sometimes done in, you know, just pen and ink or sometimes done in just charcoal like da Vinci did in their studies. And really that's what they are. You're experimenting, you're pulling these things out. But when you get to the point where you want to actually have it on the screen polished or you want to start to work with colors or you want to start to work with paints, then you have to start to tie things down. And so what this allows me to do is sit there and say, oh, well, let me, let me start to have some fun here. Maybe I want to, you know, give them a little bit, maybe I want to make them a little bit furry. So maybe I'm going to start to work with, you know, some of the fur here and give them a little bit more of a thing because maybe I want to have, maybe I want to add a little sort of a leash on here like this or a, a, a not a leash, but a, uh, uh, you know, a collar that's basically going to have, you know, his little thing on here, his little license on the front like that. So then I'm going to go in there and I'm basically cleaning up. I'm tying it down a little bit further. I may go another step beyond this, but I'll start to define some of the shapes like this and I'll start to pull the, pull the chest in. I want to make sure I get that other. Maybe I'm going to push this out a little bit here. Maybe I want to have a little bit of fur sticking out at the top because the scapula has a tendency to push up. And if you look at even a tiger or a lion, you go to the zoo, when they'll walk, you sort of get this shoulder thing happening. But of course, again, like I said before, theirs is more vertical than wide like ours is because of the placement of the scapula. But you might have this going up a little bit here, the fur, and then you come back here and then you go into this tail part here. Now I'm going to pull the knee. I'm going to have some fun here with the butt. Maybe get a little bit of fur over here like this come down like that, really kind of looking for symbols that I can draw that are going to still tell that what's underneath there is there, but in a symbolic way that I'm going to be using these shapes in terms of how I'm going to reposition the character maybe in a different situation. Maybe I'll have a little bit of a fur sticking out the back here of the heel. As I come down here, I'm going to give a little bit of a curve because I don't like things that are just straight. I think that's boring. And a lot of times, even though you look at nature and you'll see a dog's leg and it looks straight, sometimes if you can create something that has maybe a little bit of a straight here, but more of a curve, it creates a little bit more of a fluidity through the eye for the eye to follow through the drawing, which makes it even that much more interesting. Um, again, I'm going to be repeating a lot of these things. We're going to be talking about, you know, contrast and shapes. Again, I'm going to go over here now. I'm going to try to use that, those shapes that I really like to use to sort of, you know, create something here. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to create the little waist. I might even be thinking about, I might even be thinking a little bit about um, where I want some of the colors to be. So I might be, I'm just going to rough this in real quick. I might even be thinking about, oh, I might want to have a color separation here where maybe the belly is a different color than the, than the back of the skin. Maybe he's going to have some, you know, some spot on his back or something like that. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to know where this comes. I'm going to pull this down here like this. I want to Make sure I get the knee. I'm going to pull this down here like this. I'm going to have the, again, the paws. Now I've got, now you can start to see that the dog is really starting to come together in a really solid shape. Again, I'm going to give this furry thing here, and which is sort of where I need to stop and explain something. The reason the way that I do fur, even though it kind of looks very haphazardly, 
there really is a science to it in the sense of trying to create something that's going to look natural. And that is that I want to avoid this. I don't want to have just jagged. What I want to do is create a feeling, if this is a shape, for instance, of fur as a bulk shape, I want to create a sh I want to be able to understand how to create, you know, larger groups, maybe smaller ones. I want to create something that's going to actually have a sense of, and, and this is somewhat intuitive, but you have to find ways to find larger groups, smaller ones, medium shapes, give a space, negative space in here, of course, to a positive space and maybe a longer shape here. That's really going to help you create more of a natural flow in terms of how you do fur. Because a lot of times when people do fur, a lot of especially beginning artists, you go like, oh my gosh, I have to draw all these hairs and I got to get all these things in here like this. And it's just a million things. It's just natural because you're looking at nature. You're thinking, you know that a hair is a billion hairs that are sticking off of something. But what you need to do is simplify it, make it really simplified as much, much as possible. Now I'm going to work up here into the, into the face and I'm going to actually take some liberties and and sort of try to give this guy a little bit of a, you know, a personality. I'm going to try to give him a little bit of a look here. So I'm going to take a little bit of liberty that, you know, just to have some fun because I love to be able to imagine these characters as something that, you know, to me they have to be real. It's not just a drawing. The character has to be something that, you know, that I like. And now I'm going to give him a little bit of a smile here. So I'm going to create a little color separation here. And then I'm probably going to just give him a little bit of a chin, a little furry chin, and pull this up here like this, and sort of, I know he has a cheek in here, so I'm gonna sort of give a little bit of a, a push, push out his cheek a little bit over his neck, and then maybe have, maybe I'll change the ears now. Maybe I'm gonna have him more like a, like a pointed, like a, like, a, like a German Shepherd. Maybe I'm gonna pull him up like this, and have a little bit here, and maybe have this one be a sort of, you know, sort of hanging out there like it's not quite, you know, the same or something like that. It's kind of a mixture between these. I definitely would call this guy a mutt, you know, in a different ways and mixtures of a lot of different things. Now I start to have something that I can actually say, wow, I've gone from this, I've built it out and I've really got something that I can say, oh, that's kind of interesting. I might actually, now I can start to start to play around with, um, you know, even other things. 